Thank you for joining me today for a few moments in God's Word. I invite you to go with me for a few moments as we delve into the book of Isaiah, and we're going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 25, the first nine verses. Uh, the prophet paints a picture of our Heavenly Father, helps us to envision who He is. Uh, and he talks about him being a steadfast refuge, a hope to wait on, and the source of our ultimate salvation and joy. We're living in a time where the world is full of trouble. Presently, God's people, Israel, are under attack from multiple uh, sources and uh, from all directions they are being attacked but they are the people of God and God has not abandoned them and he will not abandon them. He is a place of refuge for his people in the time of war and trouble and suffering and sorrow. He is a hope to wait on. Our hope is in him and he will not disappoint and fail that hope. And he is the source of not only Israel's salvation and you're in my salvation, but he's the source of salvation for the whole world. And he is the only source for joy, true joy, real joy, wonderful joy. And that is when Jesus is living in your heart and he can speak peace and comfort and love and grace into your life. That's what brings true joy. A.W. Tozer once said, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about who we are. So let's dive in today and let's look at Isaiah 25. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made a city a heap, a fortified city a ruin. The foreigner's palace is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a stronghold to the poor and a stronghold to the needy in distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm against a wall, like heat in a dry place. You subdue the noise of the foreigners as heat by the shade of a cloud. So the song of the ruthless is put down. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow of aged wine well refined, and he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all the nations. He will swallow death up forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from the faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. That's a word for God's people today, both in Israel and around the world. It is also a, world for the, a word for those who do not know him, that if they would receive him and call upon him, he would be their God and he would be their Lord and be everything that they need. Oh God, help us to cause you and choose you to be our refuge today. Would you do that? Just say, Lord, you are my refuge. I declare that you're my place of refuge and safety today. You're my hope. You're my salvation. And God, stir in us today, every listener. Uh, Lord, stir in heart, their heart and mind, uh, faith 
to believe, to receive, and to embrace you today and to know you as their Heavenly Father. We speak that and pray it in Jesus' name. Can you say amen to that today? First of all, he says, God is our refuge. In the midst of all the turmoil, in the midst of all the rockets flying and the bombs going off and the death and the horrible things that are being done to God's people, in the midst of all that, Isaiah paints a, a very vivid picture in words it's a word picture that God is our safe place. He is our refuge. He's a stronghold for the poor and the needy in the time of distress. He's a shelter in the time of storm, uh, a shade from the heat, and he is a safety place for we can run into the name of the Lord and be saved. The image of God as a place of refuge is a great comfort in the world that we're living in, that we just call upon the name of the Lord and he comes and embraces us, overshadows us with his wings, covers us and lifts us up with his everlasting arms and surrounds us with his heads of protection. And he stays in that environment of safety and protection with us to speak peace and comfort to our heart and mind. The image of God as our refuge is not just a comforting thought. It is a foundational truth, and it is a reality for us to be able to embrace. If you define the word refuge, when we think of refuge, we often think of a place that we can be safe from danger and harm and that we can be protected. It's a sanctuary where we can find respite from the storms of life, and it's not just a place where we are keeping the evil and the danger out, but is a place where we can be calm and assured and comforted with the presence of the Lord and nurtured and fed with all the things that God knows that we need. Uh, scripture declares he's a refuge for our soul. He's the one that can provide for us inner peace and tranquility and the nourishment, mind, body, soul, and spirit of everything that we need to be made whole, to be calm, to be confident, to be uh, in a place of courage and boldness because we are kept by the Lord. And uh, uh, one of the chapters in John there, I believe it's 21 times he said kept, that we are kept and God is there. He is the one that's keeping us safe in the time of storm. He's the one that gives us hope in the time of despair, comfort when there's grief and sorrow, strength when we are weak and undone. And he supplies our needs when we are at a time where the things that we need are not readily available to us. The Lord opens his storehouse uh, from the throne room of heaven and just supplies abundantly every one of our needs. And I want you to remember that you can turn to the Lord anytime, any moment of the day or the night. You can come to him as often as you need in any circumstance, whether it's your fault or someone else's fault, or you don't even know why it's happening. You can come to the Lord and quickly find what you need from him and know that he is there that he loves you and that he's not going to leave you, that he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And he's not only your father, but he's your savior. He's your counselor. He is your physician. He is everything that you need in the time of difficulty and more. His faithfulness and reliability cannot be compared to anyone or anything or all other things. He is greater in faithfulness and reliability than everything and everyone else in the universe. You can trust him. He will not fail. He cannot fail. He's going to come through. He is faithful, faithful God, faithful God. Hallelujah. He's one you can rely on who will not disappoint you. His steadfastness and his reliability are without question and beyond measure. He always comes through. For everyone who puts their trust in the Lord, he never disappoints them. Isaiah speaks of God 
being a stronghold to the poor and needy, showing that God's refuge is available to everyone. It can't be bought, can't be earned, it's just available. The, the psalmist says that you can run into the name of the Lord and be safe. It's a powerful reminder of God's uh, wonderful faithfulness and reliability to anyone, to everyone. No one will be excluded. All you have to do is believe and call on the name of Jesus. And Father, in Jesus' name, would you help? And he will come through for you. It's an internal arrangement. It's, it's something that from before time began, God was. He is now, and he always will be. Uh, he's not like mankind. At some point, uh, we're going to age and uh, die and pass away or go in the rapture. Things are always changing for the humankind, but God remains steadfastly the same. He says, I change not. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you don't need to worry about tomorrow. You can be comforted today and you can praise him that in all your yesterdays, he's never taken his eye off of you. And he's always been there watching over you. Can you say praise the Lord? We need to be a people who are waiting on God in hope. You can wait on God and wait on hope because in his time, Ecclesiastes say, he makes all things beautiful. God has a time. It doesn't always fit the way we think and feel. And that's why we get anxious and worried and, and overwhelmed sometimes. Sometimes despair sets in. But just lift your heart and your voice to the Lord today and say, Lord, I'm waiting on you and I'm waiting for hope to come back. For I know, Lord, that you are a faithful God and you will make a way where there seems to be no way. He's the way maker. He will come through for you. I, I promise you that based upon not only my personal experience, but based upon his word that never fails. He never fails. Not one promise. He will never fail. In verse 9, the prophet Isaiah, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Isn't that awesome? This is our God. Maybe you can personalize it right now. Say, Father, you are my God. You are my salvation. And I'm waiting on the hope that you're going to bring to me. And I praise you for it. I thank you for it. You will not fail anyone who puts their trust in you. Hope. Hope is not wishful thinking or blind op optimism. It is confident expectation. I know that God is able. I know that God cannot fail. He will not fail. God is going to come through for you, my friend, and you can rest assured in that. You can be confident in that. And as you're waiting for hope to fill your heart and mind and for the heaviness to dissipate and for the fear to go away and the confidence to return, just begin to speak the name of Jesus. Just begin to praise him and give him glory and honor and immediately he's going to inhabit your praise and draw near to you and bring comfort and peace and joy to your heart. You know, we not only get things from the Lord, but we have the ability to give back to him. And that is the spirit of thankfulness, a spirit of gratitude, a spirit of speaking to him. You are a faithful God. You are a faithful friend. You are a faithful counselor. You're a faithful physician. And Lord, you will not leave me in the time of distress and trouble. Waiting on God in hope is not just about getting something from him. It is about giving to him the praise because we know who he is and what he can and will do, and we just give him praise. It's like when he spoke to Abraham, 
And in Romans 4, it says, speaking those things that are not as though they are. Before hope come, just say, thank you, Lord, for renewing my hope and renewing my strength and clearing my vision and wiping my tears away and bringing joy to my heart because you are my God. Say that to him. You are my God. You are my Lord. You never fail. You're coming through, and I praise you for that. Verse 7, uh, Isaiah also speaks of swallowing up the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. This covering or veil can be interpreted as blindness and ignorance that keep people from recognizing who God is and what he can do and what his salvation provides. God's salvation removes that blindness and veil. It takes away the desperate feeling because we know that God is going to work it together for our good. And in verse 8, the prophet further emphasizes the permanence of God's salvation when he says, he will swallow up death forever. He's going to swallow up this fear, this despair, this great attack of sin and all the demons of hell and Satan himself. God's going to swallow it up in victory, and we are going to rule and reign with him in glory forever and ever and ever without end. Can you take comfort from that? Will you take comfort from that? Will you speak your praise to the Lord today? In the time of trouble, he will lift you up. He will bear you up on wings like his eagles and cause you to run and not be weary, to be able to walk and not faint. This is not a time to fear and to worry. This is a time to rejoice in who God is, one who never fails. He's always there. Hope is on the way. It may feel like it's deferred, and we may feel like we're getting emotionally sick and desperate, but you praise the Lord, and hope will be renewed. In Isaiah 8, uh, part B of the last part of the verse 8, Isaiah speaks of God wiping away the tears from all faces and taking away the reproach of the people. Speaks of the comfort and the healing that comes from the salvation that he brings. It's a promise, not only for us today and God's people today, but it's a promise for every day to come and forever. Let's hold on to this truth. Let's put our confidence back in God. Let's not allow our mind and our conversation to be caught up in the fear and the anxiousness of what's going on in our world. But let's just thank God for his faithfulness to people. He's never failed them. He's always come through for them. He's going to do that today, tomorrow, and in all of our tomorrows. God is not only able, he is mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, and he is a victorious father. He never fails, he never loses a battle, and he's not going to lose this one or any one to come. You can rest assured in that and keep your hope in the Lord. Keep praising the Lord and giving him glory every moment of every day. And when you wake up at the night, just say, thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you for the comfort you bring. Thank you for hope renewed in my heart. And I give you glory and honor for it. We pray these things over you and for you today and each day to come. May the blessing of the Lord enrich your life. We pray this in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.